One, two, three. Good morning, Calvary Chapel. Good morning, people. good morning. We are so glad to come and uh, meet with you this Sunday morning. We look forward to this every week to be able to spend some time uh, studying God's Word with each and every one of you. So um, we have an exciting uh, lesson this week. And it's going to be a very interesting one. And Julia is going to kind of tell you about the lesson. So this morning we continue in the book of Daniel. This was supposed to be your part. But Daniel is not part of the study this week. No, it's not. We will hear about his friends. Um, but um, and, and what we'll hear about is a Bible study, a Bible story that... Many, many, many people were taught in Sunday school, and this is one of those stories that you remember for a very, very long time. I think so. And, and it's a good thing, because it's a study in trusting God, completely. I mean, totally trusting in God, when things got kind of tough. Yeah, it gets a little dicey, uh, Meshach uh, and Abednego. Shadrach. Shadrach. Shadrach should have been first. It's always Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's the way you remember them because you're kind of getting a rhythm of it rolling off your so, tongue. There. I apologize for that. So so this week we're going to study about God is, is all-powerful. That God can save those who follow him and obey him. And that it's by faith that we trust in God. We, it, we, we choose to trust in him. And we do that through our faith in Him. And we do that even during times that are very, very difficult. And I know that we've all had some very difficult times lately. But we really learn how trusting in God and the three points that Julia just mentioned are really what we want you to focus on in today's lesson. Yes. Uh, the story itself is uh, interesting. And it's... Uh, but we shouldn't just think about the story. We need to think about what's behind the story and the true faith that it took for these three young men to stay true to their God and true to their faith. And that's what God will ask us to do as we become adults and we uh, uh, face our daily challenges of life. He'll ask us to be true to him and true to our faith. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to learn more about trusting in you, Lord, and how you are faithful to those who put their faith in you, and you will never fail us. You will always be there for us. So prepare our hearts this morning. Prepare our minds that we may not only receive your word mentally but we put it to our heart Lord and we learn uh, how to apply it to our life each and every day and we know that if we the more that we trust in you and have faith that your word is true and without error Lord the stronger our faith becomes because through your word is how we learn who you are in your character. So be with us, bless this time we have together in Jesus' name. So let's jump in. We're going to read from the Bible, and we're going to read from the um, from Daniel chapter three. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was sixty cubits, and its width six cubits. He set it in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And the king and King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried out, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, 
that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and psaltery and symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn and the flute and the harp and symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, all nations, all languages, they all fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And, uh, but we know from the story that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego did not bow down to the worship. And they were people that were jealous in the court, jealous of these three young men. So these people that were jealous, they spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, king, live forever. You know, kind of worshiping the king. You, O oh, king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, in sympathy with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So then there were certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, they have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. These are the things that those people who were jealous said to the king about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so then Nebuchadnezzar, in a rage and fury, he gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to him. So they brought these men before the king. Now, if you are ready at the time, this is the king speaking to the three young men. It says, now if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and sympathy, and all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we really have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, if he does not deliver us, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor do we worship the gold image which you have set up. That's really having faith. That's really having faith, and they didn't. There's no. There's no suggestion in the Bible at all that they had to think about it, or that they, they hesitated. They, they said to him, "We we don't have to really think. We don't have no answer for you. We don't. We don't need to come up with an answer for you. Yeah. It is. It is our God who will deliver us. And if He doesn't, we we will not serve your gods. Yeah. Even if they were to die, they were saying that's okay." If that's, if that's God's will, that's, that's right. okay. We'll go with that. And that just shows the faith and commitment they had to God. So we continue reading in uh, verse 20. It says, And he commanded certain mighty men of valor, he being the king, who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was so hot when they opened the door, instantly they were burned to death. 
And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace, but nothing happened to them. So the men that you described as dying at once, those were the soldiers who, who were putting them into the furnace, right? Into the fire. And they just weren't ordinary soldiers. It says they were men of valor, so they're proven right. so soldiers trusted by the king. Right. And uh, the Lord had a different plan for and them. And the fire overcame them. Absolutely. Look, he answered, again the king speaking, I see four men loose walking around in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth, there were four men in there, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went to the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. Mm -hmm. And they had frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they would not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a heap of ash, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Now, I think it's interesting that Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges God, but then he goes on rampages and does evil things and gets angry all the time. Now, if you remember last week's lesson, he blessed Daniel and the three young men we were just studying mm -hmm. and their God but here he made statues, he gets a little nuts and he gets very angry and he's putting people to death mm -hmm. uh, so he kind of has a split personality and, and we know he's not a faithful Christian or he wouldn't be acting this way and yet the Bible tells us <coughs> The next thing the king did was that he promoted Shabrat, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. He gave them responsibility. He, he, told, he, he clearly had respect for them. He probably had respect and maybe a bit of fear for their God. And um, he, he promoted them. He didn't try to kill them again. He promoted them into positions of authority. It, it, Part of what the story shows is that your actions, when you stand true to your word and true to God, you can impact what other people say and do and how they feel about you uh, and it, people are, that they're associated with. So just your, your actions speak almost louder than your words. If you show strength and conviction in what you're doing, that will have a great impact on the people that you come in contact with daily. Sometimes they'll understand your faith, and sometimes they won't. And so sometimes the, the impact is one that um, maybe makes you feel like they don't want to be your friend. And, and that's possible. That, that is possible. And that's where we are so fortunate to have God walking with us all the time. All the time. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had God <coughs> walking with them in, that, in the midst of that trial. And for that, we, we give great praise. All right. Now comes the question and answer period. This is the most fun part because I get to test. He gets, he gets to ask the questions and I get to answer the questions. Yeah. We'll see if she knows the answer to all of them. I bet I'm, she does. I'm going to try. Okay, question number one. I'm ready. If you care to answer. 
the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar was made of what? Gold. Gold. Absolutely yeah. right. Good. Give me the next one. Next one. What did the king say would happen to anyone who did not worship the statue? The, the, the king really wanted people to worship the statue because it was in his image and it, it gave him the feeling they were worshiping him. And um, he said that if they didn't, he was going to throw them in a furnace of fire. Well, he's big on throwing people around and, and executing people. He is. Yeah. He is. Our puppy dog is coming in between us here. That's why you see me looking. Who did not bow down and worship the statue? They wouldn't do it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not going to bend down to worship, to worship the statue. Because the statue is just a hunk of metal. Now, this was a big hunk of metal. I mean, if you think about how long a cubic is, uh, it's, con it's considered that it is the measurement from the from your elbow to your hand is one cubic, and uh, so if it was sixty cubic tall, it was very tall. But still, it was why it was gold and it was valuable. It was just a cold piece of metal, had no soul, had no power. That's right. I'm going to ask a question. Yes. My turn to ask a question. Okay. Okay. What did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say to the king? They said, aha, that they would not worship anybody other than their own God. And that their God would protect them no matter from his fiery furnace. You know, he was big on this furnace, and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had confidence that God would see them through this and protect it. And I think the confidence was that he was, they knew that God was going to teach King Nebuchadnezzar a lesson. Okay, you can ask the rest of the questions. Okay. What happened to the soldiers who led Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the furnace? Well, they died. They were strong, they were reliable, they were brave, they were cor courageous, they were loyal to the king. They opened that furnace door and the heat overwhelmed them and killed them instantly. So when the king went down to the furnace area to see his handiwork, he thought, what, how many people did he see in the furnace? When he went to look in, he saw four people. They put three people in the furnace, and, and he saw four people. You, and you know, the amazing thing, when he saw the four, the three young men, their clothes, no, no burning on the edges, no their hair wasn't singed, you know, if you've ever got a match or something close to your hair, it curls it up from burning. Don't put a match close to your hair. No, no, we don't <laughs> want you to test it. Don't put a match but close to your hair. Anyway, there was nothing happening to these young men. And that's because the fourth person was God. And, and don't you think it's pretty remarkable that the king said that there's a person in there and it looks like the Son of God? That's, uh, I think what happened, that's where he acknowledges the existence mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. but he doesn't live no, he our, doesn't live. our honors and respects the authority of God. Right. right. And we see that in a lot of people today, we not do. to this extreme uh, Example, but we see a lot of people who acknowledge the existence of God but live as if there is no God. Me too. Okay, our final question. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm okay. ready. What did the king say would happen to anyone who spoke against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Well, um, I think he, he, 
had some respect at that point, and he said that anyone who spoke anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would, would be killed. Yeah. It doesn't say why he said that, whether it was out of fear, whether it was out of he's trying to make himself look strong to um, kind of align himself with the power of God that was displayed that morning, that day. Um, doesn't say why, but he was, it was very clear that he, he recognized what he saw in the furnace, and if anybody was going to speak anything bad about that, they were going to be killed. He wasn't going to have it. He wasn't going to have it. He's big with off with our heads. He's big, of. yeah, yeah. So, so what, what do we take away from this? What do we learn? Daniel's not there. We don't necessarily know why, but this, this is about Daniel's friends. They trusted in God. I think the God used this period in, uh, for the three young men and put them in a situation where he could show to them and to more importantly to Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. and people around the court that his true power. Mm -hmm. Now you, you think about going into a furnace mm -hmm. that is seven times hotter than normal and nothing happens to the three young men. But the three soldiers that just opened the door, didn't go in the furnace, but opened the door, are instantly killed. And that was because God protected them. Yes. Yeah. And, that, and, and we know that God will protect us. When we, we put our faith and our trust in God, we know that he will protect us. Now that, that doesn't mean that it's always going to turn out the way we want it to. And there are times that it turns out in a way that we didn't want it to. But we still can know that God is there with us to protect us, to comfort us, to give us strength, no matter what the circumstances. Well, because I think it's important to remember the comment that uh, the three young men said to mm -hmm. the king mm -hmm. when they said, we don't need to answer your question because we have total faith in God. But if it turns out he should choose to take, take us home uh, and that we die in the furnace, it makes no difference because we are totally committed to God and what he has will for us in our lives. And that's what we need to learn to do. And it's not easy. And it's hard to trust, especially in difficult times. It's, it's easy when everything is uh, 75 degrees and sunny and you're playing with surf's your friends up. and surfs up and <laughs> you're having fresh hot dogs and beans. Uh, it's, what does that mean? Anyway. Uh, but it's more difficult when uh, things are dark and your friends are angry with you or maybe your mom and dad are a little upset with you uh, because you did something you weren't supposed to. Uh, so just, just remember, keep your faith. The Lord's going to be with us. And the, the more we learn to trust Him, the stronger our faith becomes. And the stronger our faith becomes, the more we learn to trust them. Would you lead us in closing prayer? I will. Dear Father God, we thank you for your constant companionship that you're with us all the time. We thank you for being there with us. We thank you for helping us get through difficult and, and scary situations. We've seen more of those scary situations lately than we want to but we know we're in your hands. We know you're with us. And please help us to remember that always, that we are never alone and that we can trust in you and that we and, and help us to make the decision to have that faith to do that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Have, have a good week. <laughs>